We are a team of techno-legal professionals who deal with the challenges faced by the construction industry. Today topic. In the earlier video, we have spoken about the change of scope or variations for cash contracts and now in this video, we shall talk about the change of scope for EPC contracts because this is different from the item rate contracts in many ways. In EPC contracts as well, there are clear provisions given for dealing with any variation or change of scope, which arises during the currency of the contract, which was not envisaged during the stage of tender preparation and feasibility studies or detailed progress report preparation. But there is a difference between item rate contracts and EPC contracts. EPC contracts are fixed sum contracts, wherein risks and rewards are to be borne slash enjoyed by the EPC contractor, whereas, in item rate contracts, the contractor's risks are minimal. There are other forms of contracts like HAM and BOT, which are more risk slash reward based. As we are well aware, the contractor submits its bid on the basis of information provided in the tender documents and its preliminary site surveys. Any subsequent material slash cardinal changes in the scope of the works lead to a revision in the costing of relevant items and obviously the contract price. While there are various provisions in the typical NHAI EPC contract to analyze change of scope but the main clauses are explained herewith. 1. With respect to the stage for conceiving change of scope and notices, the most important provisions are first Clause 13.1i, authority making its intentions known to the contractor within six months from the appointed date has been prescribed for for any change of scope of general works and the second most important is 2. Clause 13.1.2, which relates to the contractor making its intentions for change of scope known to the authority for a period beyond six months from the appointed date but before 15 months, 50% 50 of the contract period from total 30 months, and this is for all works excluding major structures and there has to be an agreement between the parties for any change of scope. 3. Clause 13.1.3b, this inter alia refers to Clause 8.3.3 which relates to damages for delay in handing over the site and the authority may at any time withdraw any works. This is also related to Clause 8.2, which deals with the procurement of site and withdrawals of works by the authority which should not be more than 10% of the contract price as per provisions in Schedule H. 4. Clause 13.4.3 puts restriction on change of scope and states that withdrawals of works by the authority should not be more than 10% of the contract price as per Schedule H provisions. 5. Clause 8.3.4 speaks about the contract price which shall be reduced by 90% of the value of works withdrawn. Hence the factor for reduction of contract price is a predecided aspect for various types of contracts. For HAM projects, this factor is 1.15 as compared to 1.10 in EPC contracts, and in item rate contracts this factor is 1.0. 6. While there are other equally important clauses in the contracts, let us focus on the most important ones. Clause 13.2 talks about the procedure for change of scope and Clause 13.2.3 is regarding submission of due diligence report by contractor upon change of scope notice from authority. Order from authority for change of scope is dealt with in Clause 4.1.7.H and Clause 10.5.I.B. deals with the OT-related provisions for change of scope. 7. Clause 19.3 is regarding the procedure for estimating the payment for the works and it is stated therein that reduction will be on two accounts. First, it can be either change of scope or a second withdrawal of scope. Important to note that withdrawal is linked to the non-availability of row slash land only. A. Schedule D. Sometimes additional aspects are added in contracts over and above standard specifications, but the basic concept for a scope of works is well defined in contracts governed by Article 2 for scope of the project, which is detailed as follows. A. Uh, clause 2.1. A. Construction of the project highway on the site is set forth in Schedule A and is specified in Schedule B together with the provision of project facilities as specified in Schedule C and in conformity with the specifications and standards set forth in Schedule D. B. Clause 10.3. I. The contractor shall construct the project highway as specified in Schedule B and Schedule C and in conformity with the specifications and standards set forth in Schedule D. C. Schedule B, Clause 1.1 and Clause 2. 
geometric deficiencies, if any, in the existing horizontal and vertical profiles shall be corrected as per the prescribed standards for mountainous and steep terrain to the extent land is available. 14. Schedule NNX Clause 3.5 The authority's engineer shall aid and advise the authority on any proposal for change of scope under Article 13.5. 15. The proper reading of words stated in Schedule B is very important because it deals with development of the project highway including design and construction as follows. D. Plus 7.7 .7, The minimum requirement of structures is suggested as follows which may vary as per final drawings and design approved by competent authority. The contractor is required to conduct a detailed investigation to assess the work based on site surveys, investigations, and assessments before the commencement of work. 17. Schedule B Clause 13 Change of Scope The length of structures, viaducts, culverts, retaining walls, breast walls, bridges, etc. Specified herein above shall be treated as an approximate assessment. The actual lengths as required on the basis of detailed investigations shall be determined by the contractor in accordance with the specifications and standards. Any variations in the lengths specified in this Schedule B shall not constitute a change of scope, save and accept any variations in the length arising out of a change of scope expressly undertaken in accordance with the provisions of Article 13. 18. Article 10 Clause 10.1, 6, these deals with the safety audit pursuant to Clause 10.1 v shall be carried out by the safety consultant in respect of all such design details that have a bearing on safety of users as well as pedestrians and animals involved in or associated with accidents. The recommendations of the safety consultant shall be incorporated in the design of the project highway and the contractor shall forward to the authority's engineer a certificate to this effect together with the recommendations of the safety consultant. In the event that any works required by the safety consultant shall fall beyond the scope of Schedule B, Schedule C, or Schedule D, the contractor shall make a report thereon and seek the instructions of the authority for change in scope. To conclude on the subject matter of change of scope in EPC contracts, it can be said that this is an intricate subject and a long time process because any extra money to the contract price catches attention of the whole government. Machinery from technical proposals to financial approvals and close pursuance will be the need of all relevant hours in the process. In the following videos, we will elaborate more details on aspects of contract administration. For more details, places visit our website Dariani's Engineers and Associates Private Limited.